Hello Galactic Family. Beloved one, let's talk about your purpose in this lifetime. It is not by accident that you have chosen this incarnation. It is not by accident that you find a lot of things in upheaval. It is not by accident that you have come to till the soil of one to want to awaken but do not know how. You have been in training in this lifetime, and you have brought certain characteristics from other lifetimes which help you relate to the brothers and sisters. You have brought a certain knowing, maybe even at what you would call the unconscious or subconscious level of mind, that influences how you look at something, at least at first. Then you bring to bear what you have read, studied, heard in this lifetime to see where you are going with the message that you came to share. Your purpose in this lifetime is to help, to aid, to augment the awakening, the awareness of divinity, first of all within yourself, but as you are doing that, it is contagious. It spreads to other ones. As it was 2000 years ago, I had a message. I had a purpose. I came with a message that you are the Christ incarnate. You are love, and you are divine. And in truth, you have never been separate from your Source capital S. You come here as an extension of the Source, of your divinity. Sometimes you know it. Sometimes you act on it. A lot of times you do not. A lot of times you are so focused on what is right in front of you that it is hard for you to see the larger picture. That is why I often tell you that it is a good idea to spend some quiet time in meditation and quiet time in nature. You do not have to do a formal type of meditation. That is good, if you want to do that, but you can just allow yourself to expand into the frequency of nature expand into the frequency of the trees, of the plants, of the flowing water. Expand into that frequency and own it for yourself. Know that truly you are the one making it right at the moment that you see it. There could be someone standing next to you and they would not see the river. Hard to believe, because you say it is quite obvious. It is right there. But it is a very individual thing that you see and interpret. Frequencies are all around you. Frequencies are different colors. Sometimes even with the human eyes you can pick up certain frequencies and see the different colors, as in the rainbow. There you have frequency of energy coming forth, being obvious as different colors, and you see those different colors with the human eyes. All around you right now are frequencies. You could be hooked up to one of your technological machines that would show you your frequency. And if someone came to you and said that your most beloved pet had just been hit by an automobile, your frequency would change. Or if they came to you and said, you have the winning ticket in the lottery, and you are a multi-millionaire, your frequency would change. You could feel the frequency change and you could see it. It would be registered on one of your technological inventions. Every moment when you are quiet, every moment when you are caught up in energy and there is something really going on, your frequency changes. Others can feel this. That is why you are drawn to ones of like frequency, why you are drawn to ones who are happy because their frequency is where you want to be. It feels good, it feels lighter. Ones who are sometimes into more heavy frequency, you love them, but you do not always want to be in that frequency. Even if you are not having it measured, you can feel it. 2000 years ago I came with a message. I came to tell you that you are love, that you are light that you are the extension of the divine source of energy, and that truly, even while you are activating a body, you can know your source. You can know the surge let us put it that way of energy, when you come to the place of knowing love of self, and I do not mean selfish love, but love of self capital S where you take hold of the truth of your being and go forward with that in a happy way. 
That is what I am charging you with now take hold of the joy of being. When you look at your beloved pet and your heart opens, that is what I am talking about. When you are looking upon the innocence of the beloved pet and sure, they have their certain traits that they use to get you to do things that they want you to do, but they are truly innocents walking on four feet or flying with the wings or swimming in the water, however they go. They are love incarnate, the same as you are. But oftentimes humankind is looking so outside to see various frequencies of what is going on that there needs to be a calling back of, okay, come and focus upon the divine self that you are. Know that truly you do not take one step unless you use the divine frequency that you are. You cannot live and move without being the divine person that you are, the divine example. So it behooves you to come up higher, to come up to that place where you truly know your worth. Many in your world at this time do not know their worth. They do not know the divinity from whence they have come. They do not know that they can be happy. They have been taught from the time that they have been very little that they should try harder, and they take the message from that that they are not the best, not perfect, because obviously they are supposed to try harder to be the best. But already they are being the best that they know how. Even when they are throwing a temper tantrum, they are coming to a place of saying, I am not happy with self, and they are acting it out. But they want to be happy with self, and they want to have someone who can be the presence of calm, the presence of divine being with them to show them the way. I have been called a way shower, and I am. But you also are a way shower, and you have come into this lifetime charged with a job to do, to be a way shower, to show how you can live the human life and be happy in it, how you can be the human life and be excited about it. How you can live the human life and love each and every one you come in contact with, even if they seem at first not too lovable. But you can love them. And by loving them, you love yourself, because there is no separation. When the eyes of a human fall upon another human, it is an opportunity to abide in love, to be in the place of exalted being, out of the world voice for a moment or so long enough to rise up in the frequency that you are. That is what you really want to be. That is what you really want to do. You want to be in the space of exalted love, the place that knows, hey, I am okay, and you are. I am the emissary of love. I am helping others recognize what good there is in life. Because, as I have said, Many do not recognize that there is good in human life. They see only the faults and the failings, and they often turn that back on themselves, and then they are not happy and no one around them is happy. But you can look through to the center of their being. You can help them with words, with a smile, with encouragement to know that truly there is something good about an incarnation. And there is. There is much that is good about an incarnation. You have signed up because this is a very important time. It is a choice time for humankind. It is a choice time where many will be making choice as to whether they go forward or they go backward. The stakes are that high. If they do not make choice to go forward, they will slip backwards. You have said before the incarnation, send me. I will go. I will be the voice calling in the wilderness. I will be the voice that speaks of love. I have come through my tests and trials to the place where I know that there is choice, and I make choice to live in the light. You have come through lifetimes of darkness. You have come through times even in this lifetime when there has been darkness as you perceived it. But you have come through to this time right now where you are claiming your purpose, where you are being consciously aware of your purpose, and where you are living from the place of love, the place of light. You have chosen already to make choice in this time as example for other ones. Whenever something comes to your awareness, pause for a moment. 
Do not rush, but take a deep breath and ask, what is truly going on here? Someone is being unhappy. Someone is acting out from a place of unwholeness, a place where there is sorrow and judgment. In that moment, hold them in light. In that moment, stop, breathe, hold them in light. They will wonder what you are doing, and you will smile. And you will say, I know how worthy you are. I know that you have value. You have value to me because you are my friend. You have value to me because we walk together. You will find words to say to them, because you will know their value. You have all had training in this lifetime to bring you to this point that is going to be and is most necessary for the light. I cannot emphasize that enough. This is, in your next six months, the most wondrous choice point point of choice for you and for the brothers and sisters. It is no small thing. And you have said, I am ready. Even before the incarnation, you said, I am ready. Send me. I will go. You see, before an incarnation you meet with what you would see to be masters. You meet with a council of ones who are of the light, and you formulate in rough outline what you are going to do in the incarnation, in the next lifetime that you have. Not all the details, because you have free choice as to details, but the overall has been chosen before you do the incarnation. The overall has already been planned, and you have said, yes, to it. You have said, I will do whatever it takes, as far as training. This can be formal training or it can be informal training, just by all the choices and the learning, in broad terms, that you do in a lifetime. And your learning, as you know, comes from various avenues the books you read, the people you associate with, the classes you take, the experiences that you come through. That has been training. Each one is an expert in something. And many times it is more than one thing. You are an expert at seeing where another person may be hurting. You are an expert in seeing the light, even the tiniest spark of light that one himself herself does not see, but you see it for them. It is always there. You can find it. And that is the greatest gift of all that you can give to another one to see their light, to find the spark of light that they are and then to mirror it back to them, however they will understand it. That is what you have signed up for, and it is no small thing. You have felt this already, because you have been through some of the upheavals and the knocks that you have taken from the world, and it is no small thing. You have said, I am strong enough. I will go to hell and back and you have in your lifetime. You have known moments of hell and to heaven. I will know how it feels to be in the depths of hell and to wonder, is there any reason to keep on? And then at a certain small point within you, there has come the still small voice which has said, there is reason. You are the light. And you have started the upward climb at that point. You have come through wondrous training, and not only formal training, but the training of the world that says there is a language that the brothers and sisters understand, and it is the language of support, of friendship. Sometimes they may be a very hard acorn to crack, but you do not give up on them. You see their light. You see what can be, and you keep believing in them. You keep knowing that they are of that divine spark of light, and you encourage the light as often as you can. You encourage it by being the light yourself, which draws out the light of other ones and allows them to see that perhaps for one more day, one more hour, they can keep on keeping on. Because many of the brothers and sisters, as you have seen, especially in this time, which is a choice point time, are wondering, is there anything worth living for? You come along and look them in the eye, and underneath you say, I believe in you. You may even say it in words I believe in you. That, my dear one, my beloved one, turns everything around, when you say to another person, I believe in you. 
I know who you are. I know what you're made of. They may want to toss it off, because they have not heard it before. They do not know it. But you keep on being friends, and they may try very, very hard to push you away. Because, you see, if they acknowledge that they are the light, then they have to begin acting like the light, and they have to, from time to time, put a smile on the face. And maybe that has not been in their training. Maybe it feels very strange to them. But you keep on smiling at them and keep believing in them, and you keep on being their friend, and then they say, well, if he believes in me well, I don't really think he's wrong, but... They get to examining themselves to find a little bit of light, and you encourage them. You ask them, what makes you happy? What makes you feel that you are worth something? Well, absolutely nothing. I was told from the time that I was very little that I wasn't worth anything. Nobody knew why I was here incarnate. And you say, yes, but that was then, and this is now. And I believe in you. I know the job that you have come to do, and I know it's tough, but I believe in you, and I know you can do it. Okay, well, all right. You see, you speak to another one straight and say to them, I know you can do it. I know you're here for a reason, a very good reason. I know however you want to put this in words our father does not make junk. You have heard that saying. I know it is very true. There's something about you that is worth a lot. I see it. I know it. I believe in you. Ones at that point can run, but they will come back, or they can say, well, why? And then you begin to enumerate what you see of light about them. There is truth of light about each person. There is something that you can find that you can elaborate on. You can tell them. And that can mean the difference between life and death. Death at the soul level, where they go back to sleep. The job that you agreed to before the incarnation was to go through human life so that other brothers and sisters could see you as human, because they see that you have come through the tests and the trials. Life has not been entirely easy for you. And you have come through to a place where you can believe in something good. When they see that you have come through the tests and the trials, they have opportunity for choice. You cannot make that choice for them. You would certainly like to, and I would. Two thousand years ago I would like to have been able to choose for all of the ones. But I put it out there and I said, your life is worth more than you know. What you are living is worth more than you know. You are expanding into everlasting life that is good. Not everlasting hell, but everlasting heaven. You can have it, even if you have not the golden coins, even if you have not the body that works, the legs that work, the eyes that work. You still have life, I said to them. And while there is life, you have choice, and you can choose for happiness. Even if you do not have all of the worldly goods, in fact, worldly goods sometimes get in the way even if you do not have everything that supposedly makes you rich, you have life and you are rich, because you have life. And you can go forward, moment by moment, believing in the best of yourself. Even when you are down and it seems to be the very lowest point, there is always someone who believes in you and you are to be that person for others. That is what you signed up for, and it is not too bad a deal to be the light to others. You have been in darkness. You know how heavy it feels to be in darkness. You know how heavy it feels to have everything taken away from you, and yet the one thing that you cannot have taken away from you is life. You keep on living. Even if you decease the body, you keep on living. And I say unto you, for those who would do away with the body, that does not do away with consciousness. Sorry. But ones who do annihilate the body find themselves to be still alive, 
and they also find themselves at a choice point what am I going to do now? Because there is consciousness, there is consciousness. There is knowing. There is choice. Even if you do not have the body, you are still life. You are you going to choose over and over, until finally you choose for life and you say, Okay, I've had enough of being at the bottom of everything. I've had enough of that. And you begin to look up. All of you have been at that place, either in this lifetime or another, where you have been at the bottom level, could not sink any farther, and then you have made choice to come up, to look up. And oftentimes there has been someone right there beside you to help you. Because, you see, there is no separation, and when you call out for help, there has to be an answer. And you, quite often, can be the answer to another one's prayer, to another one's desperate prayer. That is what you have come for. I want you to hear that deeply. I want you to hear, because you have wondered. You have wondered, why am I here? I'm doing all the right things, but it doesn't seem quite enough. And that is because every day brings you opportunity to be who you are, to share the light. Every day of every incarnation and every day past an incarnation, there is opportunity for choice. There is opportunity for light. There is opportunity for the expanded heart. The one heart that lives in love and knows only love. When you get to that place, there is ecstasy. When you get to that place and you can touch that while you are incarnate. You can touch that place of ecstasy where you know, My God, I am more than I ever thought myself to be. My God. And I use those words advisedly, because truly that is your God self answering you. Do you feel the energy? That is what this message is all about, about feeling the energy, the God energy that runs through you, and to come truly alive in it, to know that truly, I am made of God stuff. I am made to give the smile, the light to other ones. That is what I signed up for. I wondered why I was here. I kept asking, why am I here? Why am I still here? Well, because your job is not finished yet. Because there are ones who need to see the light, ones who need to see the love, ones who come to you and ask, what is life all about? Why am I still here? What should I be doing? As we have said many times, there is no should except for choice what you choose in each moment to feel, to live, and to share. Choose wisely, because if you do not, you will have another time of choosing. Because our Father, the God Self of us, is always giving, always offering opportunity for love, for knowing and experiencing and expressing all that it is. And when you get to the place of expressing all that it is, you will have done your job. But once you have done your job, I will share with you, you do not stop. You come back to do it again and again, because it feels so good, because it is your own awakening, it is your own choice to choose for love, to choose for life, and to choose for happiness, the exalted happiness of knowing that I am light. Hey, well, that feels good. Yes, I like bouncing around as the light. That feels good. I want to share it. So you get really turned on by it, and all those around you either have to put on the sunshades because you are so bright, or they join you in the light. More and more brothers and sisters are going to be joining you, because this lifetime, this next six months is a choice time when many will be making choice whether they will keep on with the pattern of darkness or they will choose for the light. And because you have come through experiences of darkness, you can speak to them. You can example to them how it feels to be light and how you know and believe in them, because you know what they are made of. In the next six months of your timing you are going to be very turned on, because it is most necessary. In the next six months, especially, you are going to see opportunity to live, 
to love, to be light. And what happens after six months? Ah, that is up to you. It has not been written. But I will join you there. Never do you walk alone. Always I walk with you. Always I whisper into your ear. I tell you a funny, a story, a joke, an easy way of looking at something. And before you know it, you are smiling, you are laughing, you are saying, Ha, okay, that's kind of a funny thought. I like that. We walk together. So be it.